Hello, I'm Brooke Brown from Teach Outside the Box, and today I'm so excited to kick off my holiday STEM challenge series. So over the next several videos, I'm gonna be sharing all my favorite seasonal STEM challenges that have been used and loved by my students for many years. So I actually created these challenges back in 2015 and 2016, but I've just recently given them a huge facelift and makeover. So if you own any of these products, please make sure to go back and re-download for all of the new supplements and components to really engage your kids. So the reason I created these challenges is because just like so many of you, I'm a very busy mom, I'm a very busy teacher, and I do not have time for high prep science lessons and STEM lessons. I don't have time to be running to the store every other day or spending time gathering 30 different materials for a STEM challenge, and I know that you don't either. I am huge on using materials you already have on hand for your STEM challenges and simplifying it. You can pack in so many different engineering, mathematics, science standards with simple materials that you already have in your class. So these are gonna be super easy to throw together the night before. These are gonna be perfect for your STEM Fridays or your STEM Mondays. They're gonna take about 45 minutes to an hour um, for the full lesson, so kind of keep that in mind as you are planning. There are gonna be three different STEM challenges per month. They're whole class, teacher guided, with all the components that I'm gonna share with you in just a little while. And then I also have a fourth bonus brain builder that's perfect for team building, kind of a quick engaging activity to wrap up at the end of the month. So these challenges are also gonna be perfect for party days, those crazy short weeks kind of leading up to Thanksgiving break and fall break when you really need to keep your kids excited and engaged. This is gonna be the perfect way to do that. You can also set them up in stations at parties with parents kind of volunteering at each station, or you could pair up with another class for STEM buddies, even upper grade class and a lower grade class kind of paired together. These challenges are also going to be very easy to differentiate. So they're gonna be appropriate for kindergarten all the way through fifth grade. I have some multiple organizers that you can use to kind of cater them to your students' abilities and needs. Keep in mind that you can provide as much or as little support for your students during these STEM challenges. I have many, many options for you. However, depending on the needs of your students, you may decide to offer more or less support. So all of the materials that I'm going to share with you today are gonna to be linked below in the description. So I will have a link to my Halloween STEM challenges as well as a link to my all year bundle that has nine months worth of challenges. So today I'm gonna to share my very favorite Halloween STEM challenge with you, which is the pumpkin catapult. This is a challenge that at the end of the school year, my kids always refer back to as being one of their favorite months and their favorite challenges. And what I love about it is it's huge on establishing that perseverance at the very beginning of the year with your students. They are not going to get this design right the first try. They're gonna to have to make lots of different modifications and improvements. So they're gonna to have to be flexible. They're gonna to have to collaborate with one another. All character traits that we really want to instill in our students, especially at the very beginning of the year. So I'm gonna walk you through exactly how to put together a pumpkin catapult, just a model, so you can kind of see what it might work like. And I'm also going to show you how I would go through the lesson from start to finish. So all of the, uh, the challenges that I'm fixing to share with you, are going to go through the engineering design process as we recommend for elementary students. So we're gonna start with asking a question or posing some sort of real world problem that we want our students to solve. Then we're gonna move on to the imagine phase. And this is where your students are going to start connecting with real world structures. We're gonna key some vocabulary cards in. We're also gonna show them some background videos to really build that background knowledge. And then they're going to move on to their small groups or their partners. They are going to plan their designs and draw blueprints. They're gonna go on to create, test, and improve their catapults. This is really where the magic is gonna take place during your engineering design process. So you're really gonna to wanna to give your kids as much time as possible in these two phases. So in the test and improve, your kids are going to measure how far their pumpkin catapults travel. And at the very end, we are going to reflect and present. We're gonna bring it all home, bring them back together as a whole class. Your kids are going to share their findings. We're gonna share what worked and what didn't work. Um, and we're also gonna talk about what improvements we might make for next time. So for this particular challenge, you need to send a pumpkin over the fence to your neighbor. That's just a simple real world connection. And your kids are going to construct a catapult that will launch the pumpkin the farthest distance. These are the permitted materials for your students. I would recommend that you go ahead and gather these materials, give them a constraint on how many they use. Go ahead and put them in Ziploc baggies for your students. This is gonna be really easy to prep beforehand. 
if you have multiple classes that are doing this challenge, that also makes it very easy for them to take them apart, put them back into the baggies, and then they're ready to go for the next class. So we always want to start by exposing our kids to real world examples of whatever they are trying to create. So in this case, they're going to be shown photographs of real world catapults. We're gonna talk about what is similar and what is different in the designs, really helping them visualize what they want their catapult to look like. And you really want them to notice the feature of the lever in the catapults as being a key feature to making catapults work effectively. So connecting them to how levers work with loads and efforts and how they make work easier. So then we're actually going to apply that catapult to stored or potential energy and working or kinetic energy. Although these are really high level concepts for our littlest ones, it is never too early to start exposing them to those basic terms of physical science. And a catapult is a very easy demonstration of that stored energy and working energy. So what you can do with this chart, guys, is you can either project it on your interactive whiteboard and you can fill it out interactively. You can also put it on a document camera so that your students can follow along with you. But this is gonna be a great kind of visual aid for the teachers to use with the students. Also included in the update, I have some QR code links as well as hyperlinks to videos to really build the background knowledge for your kids. This is going to set them up to be the most successful with this challenge. So this particular link shows them different types of catapults as well as different important parts. Moving on to levers as a form of simple machine that is related to catapults. This video shows a real pumpkin chunkin contest with full-size catapults and real pumpkins to really kind of bring that magic out in the challenge. And then this is a song to help your kids remember the difference between potential and kinetic energy. So I also have two different versions of key vocabulary cards that you're gonna share with your students before the challenge. I do recommend that you share these before the challenge to really get these words in your kids' heads. And that way when they are engaged in the challenge, they can actually apply them to what they're doing. So for your lower grade kiddos, you're gonna talk about launching, levers, efforts, and loads. Moving on to third grade and up, you're gonna diving into that balanced and unbalanced force, as well as kinetic and potential energy. There are also two different levels of student recording sheets. I have a lower grade version that's a little more simplified and a more detailed upper grade version. Keep in mind, I also have a digital Google Slides notebook of all the materials that I've shared with you. So if you'd like to go completely paperless with these challenges, that is accessible for you. Your kids can type in their responses, they can add photos digitally, and they can also draw in Google Slides. So I'm gonna show you a simple model for how to construct a pumpkin catapult, but I do want to emphasize that this is only one way to solve this problem. This is never something that I would model for my students before the challenge. I also would not show them a photo of a finished catapult. You really want to encourage your kids to be creative in their designs. You want them to think divergently. You want them to go through that struggle of finding a working design. This is purely for teacher reference and for you to kind of see some designs that might be similar to what your kids are gonna do. So to make a pumpkin catapult, you just need a few simple materials that hopefully you already have lying around your classroom. You're going to need popsicle sticks, a plastic spoon, a candy pumpkin, some rubber bands, and about two to three feet of masking tape just for those students that need a little bit of extra support. Keep in mind, you can also use pumpkin marshmallows instead of pumpkin candy, or you can also use orange pom-pom balls for something a little bit softer. So to construct a simple pumpkin catapult or any catapult, you're gonna to want to start by constructing the lever first. So I usually take about two popsicle sticks, put them on the back of the spoon, and then we're gonna secure them with a rubber band. You're gonna to wanna to get it extra tight so that, that spoon doesn't come off. And this is also where some of your younger students may want to add some masking tape as well. So now that we have our lever, where our goal is to try to lift it up so that we can push it back with our pumpkin. So we're gonna want to have something that wedges between these two sticks. So we're gonna build a wedge. Very quickly, you just stack your sticks. And kids are going to realize that the more sticks they stack, the higher that lever is going to be raised up. which means it will push back further and the farther their pumpkin will travel. So once you have that stack, it's very easy to squeeze between those two sticks to lift up that lever. You can take your pumpkin and put it on the spoon, gently push it back and launch. 
So the best part about the pumpkin catapult challenge is that you can extend it to your kid's favorite part, which is the pumpkin catapult games. So you're gonna have six different stations set up for your students to put their catapults to the test for speed and distance and accuracy. So I actually split this lesson up into two different sessions because it takes quite a while. So the first half, the first hour is going to be all the components I showed you before. And then on a separate day, we take our catapults and we rotate them through the pumpkin catapult games. So your kids have their catapults and their candy that they'll take with their partners to each station. You're gonna have these set up around your classroom. And they're also going to have a recording booklet where they're gonna write down all of their measurements for each event of the games. So the first one is called Go the Distance. Your kids are simply going to kind of repeat what they did the day before. They are going to measure how far their pumpkin travels. This is a great one to do in the hallway or even outside so they can really launch them to see the distance that they go. Keep in mind that if you'd like an alternative to the candy pumpkin as you are going through these games, if you'd like something a little bit softer, you can also use pumpkin marshmallows or even an orange pom-pom ball to be a little softer for those little ones. So the second challenge is called hit the target. So you're gonna tape this target up onto a wall in your classroom or the side of a shelf will also work. Your students are going to launch it at the target and see if they can hit any of the bullseyes that are on there and they're gonna add up their total score. The third station is called Great Heights. Your kids are gonna make a tall stack of library books. Chapter books also work great for this challenge and they're going to put their catapult on the ground and try to launch your pumpkin all the way over the tower. The fourth challenge is called Tower Topple. So they're going to make a cup stack tower and they're going to launch it directly at the tower to see how many different cups fall over. The fifth challenge is called score a bucket. So you're going to put this against a wall. Your students launch it and try to land it inside the bucket. The sixth one is called hoop shoot. So you get a hula hoop or you can make just a wooden hoop, anything that you happen to have in your class. One student will hold the hula hoop and the other student will try to launch it to go through the middle. Again, they were going to record all of their measurements inside their booklet. I let my kids rotate through the stations kind of in any order they choose, and that really helps with minimizing the traffic at each station. When they are finished rotating through all six stations and they complete their reflection booklet, then they can go back and revisit their favorite stations. This is also a perfect challenge and perfect stations to set up for party day that we talked about before. The parents will love these challenges just as much as the students will, and it's a great way to keep them engaged before the holidays. So also included in my Halloween STEM pack are two other whole class challenges that my kids have loved for many years. The first one is called the Candy Tower Challenge. For this challenge, all your kids are going to need are candy pumpkins and toothpicks. You can substitute those candy pumpkins for even fruit snacks, Halloween fruit snacks, pumpkin marshmallows, or even orange Play-Doh if you're trying to get away from using food. Keep in mind that these candy pumpkins are hard and they are difficult to work with, which really builds up that challenge for our kids. So for my kindergarten and first graders, I show them how to gently insert that toothpick into the side of the pumpkin candy without breaking it. That kind of sets them up to be successful with this challenge. So what's wonderful about the Candy Tower Challenge is it's a great exposure to three-dimensional structures for your kids um, as they relate to architecture. They're gonna discover which three-dimensional shapes are the strongest and why, and they're gonna identify different names of those three-dimensional shapes. All of the written materials that I showed you before with the Pumpkin Catapult Challenge are included with the Candy Tower Challenge as well as the spider web bridge challenge. So for the spider web bridge challenge, your kids are going to construct a bridge that will hold the most spiders on the top. And in this case, it's gonna be your blocks for the spiders. And this is a great study of the parts of a bridge, the basic functions of a bridge. And it's also a great introduction to tension and balance. Um, they're gonna make lots of connections between the intersecting yarn pieces on the top and real spider webs as well. The final challenge that I have in the Halloween STEM is the Spooky Illusions Challenge. And this is going to be your bonus brain builder. It's not going to take your kids very long, maybe 30 minutes to complete with a partner. And this one is called Spooky Spinning Illusions. So they're gonna be working with a partner um, to create kind of an introduction to those spinning optical illusions. So I have several different templates that are already designed for you, as well as blank templates that your students can design their own spinning illusions. So I hope you are just as excited to dive into Halloween STEM as I am. I cannot wait for October to get here because these are some of my favorite challenges of the year. Keep in mind that the links to all of the materials that I have just shared with you are in the description below, as well as the link to my STEM all year bundle. Keep watching for the next video in my Halloween STEM series to learn all about my favorite Thanksgiving STEM challenges.